Hello all, welcome back. Till now we were discussing about unit hydrograph and S hydrograph. In the previous lecture we have solved some of the numerical examples related to S hydrograph and unit hydrograph. We know already that unit hydrograph is the direct run of hydrograph resulting at the outlet of a catchment due to 1 centimeter of effective rainfall uniformly distributed over the catchment for a specific duration d. That is the response for a pulse input how the catchment is behaving that is the unit hydrograph. In the case of S hydrograph it is the step response function. On the other hand S hydrograph is the direct run of hydrograph from an input 1 by d centimeters per hour which is acting at time t is equal to 0 and continuing in that rate indefinitely. We have seen by making use of these two principles that is by using the principle of S hydrograph how to derive the unit hydrograph having different durations. If one particular unit hydrograph having duration d we can derive different unit hydrographs having durations n d. n can be an integral multiplier or n can be a fraction. In today's lecture we are going to look into new concept that is the instantaneous unit hydrograph. Instantaneous unit hydrograph is similar to that of impulse response function. When we speak in terms of hydrologic point of view, the impulse response function is termed as instantaneous unit hydrograph. So, let us start with that. We know from DR unit hydrograph, unit hydrographs of other durations such as NDR can be derived. We are with a unit hydrograph having duration capital D and from that we can derive unit hydrographs having different durations. Two methods we have seen in the previous lecture, one is principle of superposition and the second one is the S hydrograph method. If n is an integer we can make use of principle of superposition and in the case of n as a fraction and also an integer we can make use of S hydrograph technique. So, here in this case we were deriving unit hydrographs having n d hour duration. In these cases which we have discussed we were talking about a rainfall intensity or rainfall depth uniform between the certain interval. And in the case of S hydrograph the input is the one which starts at time t is equal to 0 and continuing in that rate indefinitely. But in actual practice the situation is different that is we are having varying intensities and varying durations. So, how can we develop a unit hydrograph for such kind of inputs that is for varying intensities and varying durations are there for the rainfall data, then how can we derive the unit hydrographs for such cases? Then how can we derive the direct run of hydrographs in such cases? So, if the duration is very small, the unit hydrograph which is having with us is having a duration very small, then the problem is solved. That is we can make use of that unit hydrograph which is having very small duration for developing the unit hydrographs of different duration and also by making use of the principle of superposition we can derive the direct run of hydrograph from that. So, let us see if we are reducing the duration to a certain amount that is unit hydrograph is derived for a specific duration capital D. 1 centimeter of rainfall is occurring for a duration of capital D. So, that duration we are reducing as much as possible. What are the changes taking place in the case of hydrograph developed from those rainfalls or effective rainfalls having those durations? Consider 
four different durations of 1 centimeter effective rainfall. We are going to talk about unit hydrograph that is the effective rainfall is 1 centimeter only, but the durations are different. So, we are going to consider four different durations in such a way that d1 less than d2 less than d3 less than d4. Varying durations from d1 to d4, d1 is the smallest one. So, we can schematically visualize that. So, we are having runoff along the y axis and time along the x axis. Along with that we used to represent our effective rainfall also. So, this is the effective rainfall pulse which is having a duration of d 1 hours. Second one is the one which is having a duration of d 2 hours. In that way third one is with d 3 hours and fourth one is with d 4 hours duration. So, we are considering four different effective rainfall pulses which are having durations d 1 to d 4. The durations are taken in such a way that d1 is the smallest and d4 is the largest. And corresponding intensities will be how we will be computing the intensity because these effective rainfall pulses we are considered is of 1 centimeter rainfall. So, definitely the corresponding intensities will be 1 by d1, 1 by d2 up to 1 by d4. Here d1 is the smallest. So, the corresponding intensity that is 1 by d 1 will be the largest intensity among all these 4 intensities. So, the intensities will be varying in such a way that i 1 is greater than i 2 greater than i 3 greater than i 4. And from each effective rainfall pulse we will be having a response from the catchment that is each and every that is each of these durations of effective rainfall will be producing unit hydrographs at the outlet of the catchment. So, if we plot those unit hydrographs it will be looking like this. This is of d 1 r unit hydrograph, second one is of d 2 r unit hydrograph, third one is d 3 r unit hydrograph and the last one is the d 4 r unit hydrograph. When you observe this graph carefully, you can understand that the peak of the hydrograph is attained faster in the case of d 1 r unit hydrograph and the peak is the and the lowest peak is for d 4 r unit hydrograph. In the case of d 1 r unit hydrograph which is produced from an intensity of rainfall i 1 that is equal to 1 by d 1. So, high intensity of rainfall is producing a unit hydrograph having high peak and also quicker peak. The peak is attained at a faster rate. So, when we are reducing the duration of the effective rainfall, the hydrograph which is produced will be having higher and quicker peak. So, how long we can reduce the duration of this effective rainfall pulses maximum it can go up to 0 beyond that it is not possible. So, when we look at the field condition this is a hypothetical condition this is a fictitious way we are considering this. Actually in the real field at time t is equal to 0 we cannot expect any rainfall it will be having certain duration. So, here in this case we are describing a fictitious hydrograph in which time duration is 0. So, d 1 r effective rainfall will produce a unit hydrograph having greater and quicker peak. And what we are doing we are going to reduce the duration of the rainfall that is if the duration keeps on reducing in such a way that the duration approaches 0 maximum how much we can reduce d 4 to d 3, d 3 to d 2, d 2 to d 1 and d 1 to it can reduce again and again it can approach to 0. 1 centimeter rainfall is occurring at a very small time. 1 centimeter of effective rainfall is occurring at a very small interval of time. You can go back to linear system theory. We were discussing about three types of inputs impulse input, step input and pulse input. Impulse input is the one in which the 
input is acted on the system at time t is equal to 0. At rest of the times the value of the input is 0. In the case of step input at time t is equal to 0 it is having certain intensity and continuing in that rate indefinitely. And as far as impulse input is concerned, one unit of impulse input is acted on the system at time t is equal to 0. So, can you compare this input with the impulse input? That is here what we are telling, 1 centimeter is occurring at a very small time. So, this is similar to that of an impulse input and the response corresponding to impulse input is impulse response function. This we have already discussed while discussing linear system theory. In Cashman point of view if we are explaining 1 centimeter of rainfall is acting on the Cashman at a very short interval of time which will be producing a response or direct runoff at the outlet of the Cashman that is the impulse response function that is nothing but our instantaneous unit hydrograph. So, this is represented by the instantaneous unit hydrograph and definition point of view it is the direct runoff hydrograph resulting at the outlet of a watershed when it is subjected to a uniform effective rainfall of 1 centimeter instantaneously. That means the time is infinitesimally small that duration is reduced again and again finally it is approached to 0 infinitesimally small interval of time. Within that infinitesimally small interval of time 1 centimeter of rainfall is acted on the catchment it is producing a response or the output which is produced by this kind of input or the direct run of hydrograph produced by this 1 centimeter rainfall acting for an infinitesimally small interval of time is termed as the instantaneous unit hydrograph. In the actual condition this is not possible, this is a fictitious concept. For an IUH the effective rainfall is applied to the drainage area in zero time. Instantaneous unit hydrograph 1 centimeter of effective rainfall is applied at time is equal to 0, infinitesimally small interval of time. But in the case of unit hydrograph, 1 centimeter of rainfall is uniformly applied on the catchment for a specific duration of capital D. That is the difference between these two. One is the unit hydrograph is the pulse response function and instantaneous unit hydrograph is the impulse response function. In the case of unit hydrograph the input is acting on the catchment for a specific duration capital D. In the case of instantaneous unit hydrograph the input is acting for a, an infinitesimally small interval of time or at time t is equal to 0 an impulse input is acting that impulse input is nothing but 1 centimeter of rainfall. This IUH concept is very useful in developing direct runoff hydrograph from effective rainfall hydrograph of variable intensity. As I told earlier direct runoff hydrograph can be derived from unit hydrograph, S hydrograph and also from IUH. In the case of unit hydrograph if we are using for developing direct runoff hydrograph of different duration we need to first derive the unit hydrograph having different duration. So, in that case our assumption is that the rainfall or the input is acting uniformly within that particular specific duration. So, for developing the unit hydrograph from effective rainfall which is varying in intensity and varying in duration is difficult from a unit hydrograph having duration d. If we can develop an instantaneous unit hydrograph for a catchment, then we can develop unit hydrographs or direct runoff hydrographs by making use of this instantaneous unit hydrograph for varying rainfall intensity and also varying durations. It can be used for deriving unit hydrographs for an ungauged catchment. That is here the duration is not of importance because it is for 
time t is equal to 0 instantaneously the impulse is acting. So, this can be used for ungauged for the derivation of unit hydrographs in the case of ungauged catchments. Now, coming to the properties of IOH, IOH characterizes the watershed's response to rainfall without reference to the rainfall duration. Rainfall duration is not coming into picture, it is for a very small interval of time approaches to 0. The time is approximately equal to 0. So, here in this case the duration is not of great importance. Ordinate of IUH we are representing by the notation small ut that ut is equal to 4 for the time t is equal to 0. When time t is equal to 0 that is at time t equal to 0 our impulse input is acting on the catchment. So, the response will be starting after certain time from the time at which the input is applied. So, at time t is equal to 0 the ordinate of the IUH is equal to 0. It is same the case with uh, S hydrograph and also unit hydrograph. Ut is equal to 0 for t is equal to 0 u t is greater than or equal to 0 for t greater than 0. As time elapses as t is greater than 0 the response will be there. So, the ordinate of the u h also will be greater than 0. Then u t tends to 0 for t is equal to infinity. In the case of unit hydrograph also it is having a specific duration right and in the case of step input it is continuing indefinitely. So, it was attaining a constant or equilibrium discharge after certain time. But in the case of IUH similar to that of unit hydrograph the ordinate will be attaining the value 0 as time elapses to infinity. Now, the area under the curve of IUH represents a DRH depth of effective rainfall equal to 1 centimeter similar to that of UH. We are having the IUH instantaneous unit hydrograph if we are taking the area under the curve it is equivalent to a runoff depth of 1 centimeter that is our effective rainfall considered that is integral 0 to infinity ut dt is equal to 1 area under the curve how can we calculate by integrating that function. The IUH is represented between the time interval 0 to infinity. So, if we are integrating the function representing IUH we will get the area under the curve that will be equal to unity. Now, coming to the important concept lag time of IUH represented by TL. Lag time we have discussed during the time of storm hydrograph also. In the case of IUH it is representing the time interval between the centroid of an effective rainfall hydrograph and that of the corresponding DRH. The time lag or the lag time of an IUH is nothing but the difference of time between the centroid of ERH and the centroid of the IUH. The time lag is very important when we were discussing about storm hydrograph also we have seen it is nothing but the time interval between the centroid of the effective rainfall hydrograph and the centroid of the instantaneous unit hydrograph. But sometimes it is very difficult to find out the centroid of the direct runoff hydrograph or the storm hydrograph in that case we will be taking the difference between the time between the centroid of the effective rainfall hydrograph and the time to peak. So, this can be mathematically represented as integral 0 to infinity u t t d t is equal to T l. The time lag of I u h can be obtained by taking the integration of T u t d t. The time interval is between the limits are between 0 to infinity. So, here in the previous expression also you might have noticed the limits are between 0 to infinity that is our input is acting at time t is equal to 0 it is an impulse input based on that what response we are obtaining that is the impulse response function or the instantaneous unit hydrograph. This instantaneous unit hydrograph can be used for finding out the direct runoff hydrograph 
and here in this case the time interval is between 0 to infinity. So, if we are finding out the integral 0 to infinity ut dt, it will be giving us the area under the curve that is nothing but the effective rainfall depth or the volume corresponding to 1 centimeter of rainfall. And in the case of time lag, the time lag in the case of IUH can be calculated by making use of the integral 0 to infinity t u t dt. Now, let us understand how this IUH concepts can be utilized for deriving direct runoff hydrograph and also unit hydrograph. First, we will see the case with direct runoff hydrograph. This is not new to you, you have already studied convolution integral during the time of linear system theory we have seen what is meant by convolution integral and what is the expression related to that. Same concept is used here for finding out the runoff at the outlet of a catchment or the direct runoff hydrograph from the instantaneous unit hydrograph. That is the response to the complete input time function i tau can be found by integrating the response to its constituent impulses that can be obtained using convolution integral. That is we are considering the entire effective rainfall as different effective rainfall pulses and the response from each pulse will be calculated and summing up those uh, responses will be providing you the direct runoff at the outlet. That can be done by in the case of a continuous input, continuous rainfall that can be done by making use of the convolution integral. The same principle is used here also by making use of the IUH we can get the direct runoff hydrograph at the outlet of the catchment with the principle of convolution integral. What is convolution integral? It is given by Q of t is equal to integral 0 to t i tau u t minus tau d tau. In this q t is the direct runoff and i t is representing the instantaneous effective rainfall of duration t. Here we are having i tau, it is related to the constituent impulse which we are considering. Continuous rainfall input is there that has been divided into small increments of rainfall. So, u t minus tau is the ordinate of the IUH at time tau and i tau is the instantaneous effective rainfall of duration tau. If you are having an ordinate u t minus tau multiplied with the effective rainfall will be giving us the direct runoff corresponding to that effective rainfall. That way for each and every effective rainfall pulse will be finding out the ordinate and summing up will be giving us the total response. That is what is done in the case of convolution integral. So, u t minus tau is the instantaneous unit hydrograph ordinates that is produced due to 1 centimeter of rainfall instantaneously applied on the catchment at time t is equal to 0. That ordinate multiplied by the effective rainfall will be giving us the ordinate of the direct runoff hydrograph. So, the same convolution integral can be utilized for deriving the direct runoff hydrograph at the outlet of a catchment by making use of the instantaneous unit hydrograph. Now, let us move on to the relationships between the unit hydrograph, instantaneous unit hydrograph and step hydrograph. Because we have seen while deriving the unit hydrograph having n d hour duration, in the case of n as a fraction, we were making use of S hydrograph principle. If n is an integer, we can make use of principle of superposition. So, here all these are responses for different types of inputs. UH is a response to pulse input, IUH is a response to impulse input and S hydrograph is the response to step input. So, we can find out certain relationships between these response functions. Let us move on to that. That is relationships among 
IUH, UH and S hydrograph. IUH is the response of a catchment for an impulse input. UH is the response of a catchment for pulse input and S hydrograph is the response of a catchment for a step input. What are these inputs and what are the time related to each and every input? All these things we have looked into in detail. Now let us see is there any relationship existing between any of these two or if one is available other one can be determined or not. Definitely we know if unit hydrograph is there we can derive the S hydrograph and if S hydrograph is available we can derive the unit hydrograph and further we can develop the direct run of hydrograph corresponding to that. Now the question is that whether there is any relationship between IUH, UH and S hydrograph. Let us move on to that. First we will look into the relationship between UH and S hydrograph. This is not new to you. This we have already seen. Based on this principle only we have derived UH having different duration by making use of the principle of S hydrograph. Consider an S hydrograph corresponding to a DR unit hydrograph that I am representing by S1. We are going to consider an S hydrograph which is derived from DR unit hydrograph. S1 is the response of the catchment for I is equal to 1 by D centimeters per hour applied indefinitely. S hydrograph is obtained when an input is applied to a catchment or a system indefinitely. That is initially at time t equal to 0 it is starting and with that constant rate it is continuing indefinitely. So, that intensity is 1 by d centimeters per hour in this case because we are considering a unit hydrograph of dr duration. Now we are going to now we are going to lag this s hydrograph s1. So, we will get s2. S2 is nothing but the DTR lagged S hydrograph. Then we can write DTR unit hydrograph is equal to S2 minus S1 divided by IDT. The same principle which we have used for deriving a unit hydrograph having different duration by making use of the S hydrograph principle. SA we have developed, we have lagged that SA by certain duration capital T and we named it as SB. SA minus SB divided by T by D was giving us the unit hydrograph having duration capital T. In the similar way here we have written corresponding to a duration of DT. So, DTR unit hydrograph is S2 minus S1 divided by the corresponding rainfall depth. If intensity of rainfall is I that is 1 by d centimeters per hour and corresponding to a duration of dt hours the depth will be I dt. So, we will be dividing S2 minus S1 by that I dt. So, if we are having the S hydrograph we can derive the unit hydrograph. So, this is the relationship between the unit hydrograph and the S hydrograph. Now coming to the relationship between S hydrograph and IUH instantaneous unit hydrograph. We are having DTR unit hydrograph given by S2 minus S1 divided by I DT. DTR unit hydrograph is there. What is the relationship between that and S hydrograph we know. So, this is the equation corresponding to that. So, in this what we are going to assume DT tends to 0 the DTR unit hydrograph becomes instantaneous unit hydrograph. That is the time duration DT is reduced again and again to a smaller value in such a way that DT is tending to 0. So, the corresponding response will be representing the instantaneous unit hydrograph because the duration has reduced to 0. So, the ordinate of IUH can be written as ut is equal to limit dt tends to 0 s2 minus s1 divided by i dt. What we are doing for getting the ordinate of the instantaneous unit hydrograph we are making use of the principle of limits. 
because here the duration dt is approaching 0. So, we can write ut is equal to limit dt tends to 0 s2 minus s1 divided by s3. It can be written as 1 divided by i ds by dt. Now, consider i is equal to 1 centimeter per hour. So, here intensity of rainfall is considered as 1 centimeter per hour. 1 centimeter of rainfall occurring for a duration capital D and D is assumed to be 1 hour. So, we can get the intensity to be 1 centimeter per hour. It is not 1 centimeter rainfall acting for a duration capital D. It is the 1 centimeter of rainfall acting for a duration of D hours which is equal to 1 hour. So, I can be written as 1 centimeters per hour. So, our instantaneous unit hydrograph ordinate ut can be written as ds bar divided by dt. This is nothing but the slope of the S curve produced from effective rainfall of 1 centimeter per hour. 1 centimeter of rainfall is occurring for a duration of 1 hour. Then we will get an effective rainfall intensity 1 centimeter per hour. So, if that is the case, we can develop the uh, IUH ordinate. We can get the relationship between IUH and the S hydrograph by taking the slope of the S hydrograph, we can plot the IUH. So, ut is equal to ds bar by dt. So, IUH at any time t from the catchment is equal to slope of the S curve produced from an effective rainfall of 1 centimeter per hour. That is S hydrograph is an integral curve of IUH. If IUH is obtained by differentiating S curve, then definitely we can attain S hydrograph by integrating the instantaneous unit hydrograph. But you need to be careful about the duration interval with which limits with which it is integrating all those things. But IUH can be obtained by differentiating the S curve within certain time limits in such a way that T2 minus T1 tends to 0 or DT tends to 0. The ordinate of S hydrograph at any time T is equal to the integral of the area under the IUH from 0 to T. That is area under the IUH will be giving you the ordinate of the S hydrograph. Now, coming to the relationship between IUH and UH, we have already seen UT IUH ordinate is given by the expression ds by dt that is S2 minus S1 divided by I dt. I we have considered 1 centimeter per hour, then we can get ds by dt as the IUH ordinate. What we are going to do? We are going to integrate it between T1 to T2. So, this expression ut is equal to ds by dt, we are going to integrate between t1 and t2. So, we can write s2 bar minus s1 bar is equal to integral t1 to t2 ut dt. If the time interval is sufficiently small, IUH can be considered as linear within that particular interval. We are considering the time interval t1 and t2 very small. So, in that case the curve, the shape of the IUH is similar to that of a unit hydrograph. Only difference is that the duration is reduced in such a way that it approaches 0. So, we are considering a time interval very close to each other so that we can assume that the IUH is behaving as a linear curve between that time interval. If that is the case, we can write ut is equal to ut bar which can be written as half of ut1 plus ut2. We are assuming the ordinates of IUH at time t1 is equal to ut1 and at time t2 is equal to ut2. We are assuming a linear variation between t1 and t2. So, we can take the average of these ordinates to get ut. ut can be written as ut bar that is equal to half of ut1 plus ut2. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to combine these two equations. That is combining ut is equal to ds by dt with this, we can write 
S2 minus S1 divided by delta t is equal to half of ut1 plus ut2 ds by dt S2 minus S1 divided by delta t. There we have found that ds by dt can be written as S2 bar minus S1 bar. So, S2 bar minus S1 bar divided by delta t can be written as half of ut1 plus ut2. So, here we have assumed a linear variation of IUH ordinates between T1 and T2 that we can do if the interval between T1 and T2 are considered to be very small. So, if you look at this particular equation left hand side is nothing but S2 minus S1 divided by delta t. What is it? It is a delta t r unit hydrograph that is duration d is equal to delta t we are going to substitute d is equal to delta t then the dr unit hydrograph ordinates can be obtained by averaging the iuh ordinates between the limits d is equal to t2 minus t1 so if we are having the dr unit hydrograph if we are having the iuh instantaneous unit hydrograph we can derive the dr unit hydrograph by averaging the ordinates of IUH or the instantaneous unit hydrograph within that duration. Now, coming to the relationships among IUH, UH and S hydrograph, let me summarize these relationships that is UH, the unit hydrograph, unit hydrograph is obtained by taking the integral of IUH between the limits T1 and T2 that is the limit d is delta t, delta t is t1 minus t2 or t2 minus t1 and unit hydrograph can be obtained by taking the derivative of S hydrograph between the limits t1 and t2 that is delta t. That is if you are having a S hydrograph by taking the derivative of S hydrograph between t1 and t2 we will get the ordinates of unit hydrograph. And if we are having the IUH instantaneous unit hydrograph, if you are integrating the instantaneous unit hydrograph between the limits T1 and T2, we will get the unit hydrograph. So, you can understand the relationship between this. Unit hydrograph can be obtained by integrating the IUH within certain limits T1 and T2. And the same unit hydrograph can be obtained by differentiating the S hydrograph curve between the limits T1 and T2. The only difference is that we can get the IUH by difference between the S hydrograph. We can derive the IUH by taking the derivative of S curve between certain time limits, but this limit should be selected in such a way that that delta t should approach 0, that duration should be very very small. Then we will be deriving the IUH. If that duration is a specific interval delta t and if we are differentiating the S curve between those limits, we will be getting the unit hydrograph. These are the relationship between the IUH, UH and S hydrograph. Mathematically, we can explain all these things based on linear system theory. The relationship between the impulse response function, step response function and the pulse response function can be utilized for explaining the relationships between the instantaneous unit hydrograph, S hydrograph and the unit hydrograph. So, here I am winding up the concept related to instantaneous unit hydrograph. The reference related to this topic is given over here. Thank you.